Okay, so it's now the 12th of October and uh, lambing was supposed to start officially about the 8th of October, uh, but in fact it probably started three or four days before that uh, when some of the twinners started dropping a bit earlier than that. Um, so it's been going pretty well. We haven't had any ewes get into any real trouble, um, but some of the twin ewes have dropped off their second lamb which in Merinos seems to be fairly normal. I think I mentioned in a previous video that you're lucky to get 150% uh, success rate out of twin ewes in uh, Merinos. We're not quite sure why that is. Um, there is some re interesting recent research uh, that suggests that lack of melatonin might be a little bit of a problem causing lack of oxygen in the second twin's brain, uh, which means that they don't actually suckle quite as well. Uh, anyway, whatever the reason, uh, they drop them off and so uh, if they're visible and, they're, and you can get at them easily, um, we go and pick that up, pick it up and uh, bring it home and, and then try and feed it and raise it at home. Now sometimes be, the, the mum has dropped them off for a good reason, they're deformed or whatever and you just can't raise them. You can pick the abandoned lambs because they'll be sitting somewhere in the paddock with no ewes anywhere nearby. Um, but you do have to be a little bit careful. You do have to sit and watch for a while and just make sure that the ewe hasn't wandered off to have a bit of a feed uh, and is not going to come back and pick up that lamb. So it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience to make sure that you're not picking up a lamb that's, uh, that's properly mothered. So if you spot one that's uh, been dropped off, and if you can get at it easily, in other words, without disturbing the other ewes and making them drop off their lambs, run away from their lambs and, and causing more mismothering, um, then it, we go into the paddock very carefully and pick up that lamb and bring it home and try and raise it at home. Some lambs are really good. You get them home and they'll suckle straight away from the artificial teeth. Um, other lambs you have to be very persistent and use every trick in the trade to um, get them to suck. Some are very uh, reluctant to suck. But usually if you persist you'll get there in the end. Um, it's much easier with a plastic bottle because you can get the teeth in their mouth and squeeze the plastic bottle and get a little bit dribbling down their throat and usually that'll get them going. It, it may take a day or two but it's, it's very rare that you can't get one going. And then the next thing is that a couple of days later, after the colostrum and the brown fat have sort of worn off, um, you find that they can sometimes go downhill and they'll sometimes get the scours and things like that. You've got to be very careful. You do not want to overfeed them initially, although they, they want to, but you've got to be very careful about that. So you've got to, got to feed them the right amount too. Once you've got them going on the bottle, you can then... Um, use a lamb bar or similar sort of thing. I mean we've got one here <coughs> that I'm showing you that's got four teats on it um, so you can feed four lambs at once with this. Um, I'm showing it to you uh, with it on my knees uh, but normally you hook it onto the side of a fence or something like that um, and that way you can manage the lambs onto it and then take them off, fill it up again and get another set of four lambs, feed them, take them off and keep repeating the process if you've got multiple lambs. At the moment we've got six lambs, seven lambs, sorry, the big pardon. And Sarah said, Dan, please don't find any more. I'd like to show you some video of the ewes uh, with their lambs because they're so cute uh, watching the little lambs play around um, and, and it's great watching the mums, um, you know, in the birthing process and that sort of thing. However, I really don't have enough um, camera equipment to be able to get close enough to do that. With merinos you do not want to get close to them while they're lambing because they'll just up stakes and walk away and leave the lamb behind. So I can watch them through the binoculars from a distance and and observe what's going on uh, and uh, but I cannot with my current equipment film it. Maybe uh, towards the end of lambing might be able to get a bit closer with the camera to get some footage. Uh, anyway, we'll see how we go on that one. In the meantime, here's some video of them being cute. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.